Our wireless networks use radio frequencies as their medium of transport. And in this video, we're going to take a look at some of the underlying fundamentals of radio frequency. Hi, my name is Kevin Wallace, and we'll begin this video with a look at some terminology, things like frequency and wavelength and amplitude, and then we'll get a bit mathematical and see what the relationship is between wavelength and speed and frequency, and we'll do some math to see what the approximate wavelength is for our three different Wi-Fi bands of 2.4 gig, 5 gig, and 6 gigahertz. Then we'll take a closer look at those bands and talk about how many non-overlapping channels we can have in each of those bands. And the band that is the most challenging for us is the 2.4 gig band, where we can only have three non-overlapping channels. We'll see what those are and why we have to select those specific channels. Now let's jump into the video, which by the way is a sampling from our upcoming CCNA version 1.1 video training series, as we take a look at RF or radio frequency fundamentals. In this video, we want to consider what frequency bands are used by Wi-Fi devices. And to have that discussion, we need to define some terminology around waveforms. First, consider this waveform. It looks much like a sine wave you might have learned back in high school trigonometry class. And if we say that that horizontal line that we oftentimes refer to as the x-axis, if that represents zero, you see this waveform goes up, it comes back down to zero, then it goes down below zero and it comes back up to zero. And then we're doing it again all within this one second period. But that complete oscillation from zero to the peak, back to zero to the minimum, and then back up to zero, that complete oscillation is referred to as a cycle. So in this diagram, we have two cycles. The first cycle and the second cycle all occur within a one second period of time. And the number of cycles that we have per second determines the frequency. The unit of measure we're gonna use is Hertz, abbreviated as HZ. That is the number of cycles we have per second. In this example, we have two cycles per second, and that means that the frequency is two Hertz. Another term we need to know is the wavelength. That's literally the length of a complete cycle. So in this example, the wavelength would be the length, typically measured in centimeters with Wi-Fi technologies, it's the length of that cycle. Next up is amplitude. That is the intensity of the waveform at its maximum. Here we see that the amplitude is the maximum height of that waveform. And that represents the power of a signal. So in the Wi-Fi world, if I have a higher amplitude, I have a higher signal strength. Similarly with sound waves, if I'm talking louder, then the amplitude of my sound wave is higher. But amplitude, that's the maximum intensity of the waveform. It represents the power of that waveform. And there's an inverse relationship between frequency and wavelength. As frequency goes up, the wavelength goes down. In fact, here's the formula. And it says that the wavelength, which is often written as the Greek letter lambda, a lambda equals the speed of the wave divided by the frequency. And when we're talking about radio waves, which is a type of electromagnetic wave, we assume that the speed of the wave is approximately the speed of light in a vacuum. After all, light is an electromagnetic wave. It just has a higher frequency than our Wi-Fi signals. And as you look at this diagram, you can see the range of frequencies in the electromagnetic spectrum that are visible. But our Wi-Fi signals, they're going to live closer to that microwave area. Let's do some math. Let's figure out the wavelength approximately of a frequency of 2.4 gigahertz. That's 2.4 billion cycles per second. If we assume that the speed of the wave is the speed of light in a vacuum, and yes, it's going through air in our case, but it's really, really close to the speed of light in a vacuum, we'll assume that it is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, divided by 2.4 gigahertz. And that's 2.4 billion, so we can write it as 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, divided by 2.4 times 10 to the 9th hertz, which is cycles per second. So this will give us the wavelength, which will be meters per cycle, because the seconds cancel out in this equation. That means that we're going to have a wavelength of 0.125 meters, in other words, 12.5 centimeters. What about the 5 gigahertz band? If we had a frequency of exactly 5 gigahertz, 
then the wavelength would be 6 centimeters. If we're using the 6 gigahertz range, and we had a frequency of exactly 6 gigahertz, its wavelength would be about 5 centimeters. And these are the three frequency bands we're likely to find in today's Wi-Fi networks. And generally, as we increase the frequency, going from 2.4 to 5 and then from 5 to 6, generally we can support higher bandwidths at those higher frequencies. The downside is, as we go to a higher frequency, the range of our signal tends to be less. Lower frequencies can pass through walls and other barriers and experience less loss or less attenuation as compared to higher frequencies. And these three Wi-Fi frequency bands, they're considered to be unlicensed frequencies, meaning you don't have to go to your country's communication authority in order to have permission to use them. And this can vary country to country, but here in North America, we have these three different frequency bands that we've discussed. And when we say we're using a band, we're not saying we're using that exact frequency for all communication. We're using a range of frequencies that are sort of close to the band of 2.45 or 6 gigahertz. A big design challenge, though, when it comes to the 2.4 gig band is if I want to have multiple channels being used within that band of frequencies, I can only have three at a maximum. The frequency range is just not big enough to accommodate any more, and I want to give you a visual representation in a moment of why we have that limitation, but the good news is we don't have that limitation when it comes to the 5 gigahertz or the 6 gigahertz band. In the 5 gigahertz band, we can have 25 non-overlapping channels, and these channels have a channel width of 20 megahertz. And we can also do something we'll talk about later in this module called channel bonding, or we can take multiple 20 megahertz channels and bond them together to give us a 40 or an 80 or maybe a 160 megahertz channel. But here we're talking about 20 megahertz channels and we can have 25 non-overlapping channels in the 5 gig band and 59 non-overlapping 20 megahertz channels in the 6 gig band. And let's wrap up this video by seeing why we do have this limitation for the 2.4 gig band. In the 2.4 gig band, as we see here, we have 14 channels, and there is a 5 MHz separation between each channel, with one exception. There's a 12 MHz distance between channels 13 and 14. By the way, you'll probably never use channel 14. You have to meet two criteria to use channel 14. You have to be in Japan, and you have to be using the really old standard of .11b. So we can largely ignore channel 14. Now here's a common misconception. Many people see these different frequencies available when they're setting up a wireless access point or a wireless router, and they don't want to have overlapping channels, so they might say, I'll set this access point to use channel 1, and I'll set this other access point to use channel 2, and this other one to use channel 3. That's not going to work. Because when I say we're using a certain channel, I'm saying that channel frequency is the center frequency of the channel we're using. We mentioned that we're going to be using 20 MHz channels, and that is what we're using to transmit data in modern standards, but the actual width of a channel, even though we don't use it all today, is 22 MHz. And if I put a 22 MHz channel centered at the channel 1 frequency, you'll see that I'm not only using channel 1, I'm also encompassing channel 2, and I'm getting a little bit into channel 3. So the question is, where can I center my next channel? to not interfere with channel 1? And the answer is, I have to add 5 channels. 1 plus 5 is 6. That's our next non-overlapping channel. Notice it goes a little bit below the uh, center frequency for channel 4. So if I had tried to center this channel on channel 5, then there would definitely be some interference with channel 1. And keeping with our rule of adding 5 channels to have non-overlapping channels, if I add 5 to channel 6, I get channel 11. These are the three non-overlapping channels that we typically use when we're using the 2.4 gig band. Now technically you could have one other non-overlapping channel if you were to center your channel on the channel 14 frequency since there is a bigger separation between channels 13 and 14, but again we'll probably never be using channel 14. So I want you to know the three non-overlapping channels we have are channels 1, 6, and 11. And if we're deploying this in a large enterprise environment, the question comes up, do we have enough channels? I might have dozens of access points. How can I keep them from interfering with one another while only having three channels that I can use? But the good news is we can actually do that by being strategic in our design. 
We can position our access points such that an access point using channel 1 is only bordered by access points using channels 6 and 11. To do this, we use a honeycomb style approach. Imagine that we start off with an AP using a channel 1. Well, let's say that above that coverage area, I put an AP using channel 6. And below that channel 1 coverage area, I put another AP using channel 11. And if I want to extend my coverage area, I could place an AP that's adjacent to that connection between channels 1 and 6, and it's going to be using channel 11. And I can do that on both sides of that boundary between channels 1 and 6. And similarly, I can place APs using channel 6 on that boundary between channel 11 at the bottom and channel 1. You see how we're building this honeycomb? And I could extend this indefinitely using this pattern. So that's a visual representation of why we have this three non-overlapping channel limitation for the 2.4 gig band. But again, we don't have that limitation for the five or six gig bands. And that's going to allow us to bond multiple channels together, giving us channel widths on the order of 40, 80, maybe 160 megahertz. That's going to allow more simultaneous communication within a channel. And we can have multiple non-overlapping channels in the five and six gig bands, even though we've done channel bonding.